Our epistle text is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night and when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper and laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist, and then poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash your feet, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. But, in, but is completely clean. You are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that is why he said, not all of you are clean. And when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For so I am. Then if your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you and also you are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recalling over this past week uh, of 
all of the many Monday Thursday services that I've been to at Salem and other churches here in North Carolina and also in Wisconsin and Indiana multiple in Wisconsin there for five years so I got to go to a lot of different churches there Indiana New Jersey uh, Kentucky and of all of the ones that I went to for those Monday Thursday services there was always the Lord's Supper and that was that was by design not by design of them necessarily but by design of me I wasn't going to go where there was not the Lord's Supper on Monday Thursday today marks the day that I go to the church that does not have the Lord's Supper. By no fault of the church's own, today we, these words will not be spoken. On the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The host will not be raised, and these words, in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, and the chalice will not be raised. And as I think about that, and I think about all of the churches that I've been to on Monday, Thursday, and then I hear of all of the big plans that other churches have had for Monday, Thursday. It makes me think that the church, in the large sense, in the sense of branding, branding Monday, Thursday, has become nothing more than a circus. I would take a poll amongst Christians to ask what the word Monday means. And I unfortunately believe I would receive about the same results that, I thought, that I'm thinking. But really, Monday, Thursday has, has become less about Christ and less about His Supper and more about other things. Just as Christmas has been, an Advent has been stripped of the uh, gestation of St. Mary to the birth of Christ, it's made about bringing in live donkeys into the church. It's about playing the right songs in the right band. It's, a, it's about uh, dressing up and having live nativities. All of the things that are truly just smoke and mirrors uh, so that we can feel better about ourselves about doing something, anything, because there's the one thing that we don't have in, in our control, and that is the Word made flesh. And so we see during Lent, all of a sudden, maybe about halfway through Lent, Christians start to realize that it's Lent. Now, I'm not going to call it that. But it's getting close to the passion. Well, we better have Johnny stop shaving so that he can play Jesus in the play. We better make sure that uh, we clean pastor's uh, uh, tie and, and, and suit and make sure that we roll up his sleeves so that he can wash the feet of all of his people as a symbolic understanding of what Christ did for His disciples, we should make sure that, Bet that Betty has the unleavened bread recipe for the Seder meal so that we can all pretend to have the Lord's Supper. And then 
as I'm thinking about all of that, and every every year it gets level, it goes up and up and up, and it gets more grandiose and grandiose, to the point to where uh, Christ, beca- Christ in His supper becomes nothing, void, not even not not only is it not available, it's not even mentioned. And Monday Thursday's sacrament is replaced with the foot washing. But the ironic thing is that you can't. According to our text, you can't separate those things. And so pastors come down and and wash the feet of their people, basically saying that they're Jesus, which is a problem. That is an issue. And saying that I'm doing this for you because Jesus told me to do it. Now, once a year, all right, don't get too greedy. I'm only... I'm only washing your nasty feet one time a year. Other than that, um, forget it. Jesus, Jesus obligated me to once. And then, of course, the Lord's Supper is, is, is hidden. And everybody looks and says, look at how great our pastor is. Look at how, look at how, uh, look, look, we're next. We're next. Uh, and during Advent, look at the donkey. Look, it's a real donkey. We have real palm fronds. We have real this. We have real that. But we don't have real Jesus. And so I've, I've been thinking all week, how am I going to do Monday, Thursday service? without the sacrament of the altar. And then today, after the light people left, I came in and I heard the sound of silence and I thought to myself, we need this. We need to be stripped bare so that we want to be clothed. We need to go hungry so that we may hunger and thirst for righteousness. As sad as an empty church is, it is not as sad as, an, as empty hearts who are at church to receive the wrong thing. And I see so many pastors on face, Facebook and all these other platforms who have been doing such a great job. But they too have been coming to churches that are empty and giving messages of hope to you. And then going home and feeling as if, am I just a leaf waving in the wind? Am I making any difference at all? Is the Word of God that is spoken, boy, sometimes it feels like it returns void. But today, and Monday, Thursday, the church is bare and the supper is not here. But understand this, there, the connection between Christ saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That is not substituted for the foot washing. And we should not do the foot washing in our churches, period, because it overshadows the, uh, the, the Lord's Supper, number one. But number two, in the much more grievous sin, is that Christ says this to His disciples. Now before the, Passover, now before the Feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour had come to depart from this world to the Father, having loved His own who were in the world, He loved them to the end. And then we continue to this part, remembering the second worst 
most blasphemous part of why we should not do washing our feet, but why not having the Lord's Supper today is salutary. He laid aside his outer garments and took a towel and tied it around his waist and he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. And he wiped them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter and he said, Lord, do you wash my feet? And the, and the Lord said to him, and listen to this part, what I am doing now, what I, what I am doing to you, what I am doing you, do not understand now. But afterward, you will understand. And then Peter, being Peter, says, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus says, If I don't wash you, you have no part in me. And then he said, Okay, never mind. Wash all of me. And Jesus says, No. Those who are clean need only wash their feet. So tell me then, what was that thing that Peter did not know until after what? It wasn't until after the death of Christ and the resurrection. Because it wasn't until after the death of Christ and resurrection that Christ says, Go into all ethne, go into all, go to the Gentiles, go into the world, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Peter, that which you did not know after my death and resurrection, now you do know. You have been washed. You no, have no need to be rewashed in, in a rebaptism. Your feet may be dirty. Repent that they may be clean. But you are clean. And so today, on this Monday, Thursday, we can take comfort in our baptism. We can take comfort in that our heads were washed. The, the, that we can take comfort in that our souls were cleaned, were cleansed, rather. We can take comfort in the fact that we have been saved from this world. We can take comfort that whether the, this church building is empty or full, its members are forgiven, washed. And I know because it's been my hand that has fed them Jesus' body and given them to drink Jesus' blood. And as long as you are washed and fed, you are sustained until you feed again. So today is not an extra special day that we need to commune. Every day is a special day in which we need to commune. Today is just the day in the liturgical church here that we remember that Christ loved us so much that He gave us His own body to eat and His own blood to drink. And He connects that directly to the cross of Calvary and He connects the cross of Calvary directly to the empty tomb. And He connects the empty tomb directly to His baptism. And there at the bottom, like a parachute, is you, saved by the meritorious works and the means of grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.